So it was fun to see all of your faces on these Wednesday nights. If you of you remember gathering like this in my living room around the fire. Obviously, the pandemic is what pushed this on us, or we'd be meeting live, and some of you would be listening in from afar, but a different situation. Uh, one of the benefits this pandemic has brought us is that we now have an international group gathered here, all sharing our hearts and our intentions. And I find it very beautiful. But we also want to hold a circle, a sacred space around this whole sharing. To, we don't say to negativity, get out of here. We say, you may sit and listen, but you may not speak. So offering love to uh, what is sometimes called the loyal opposition, <laughs> those who are more negatively inclined and inviting them to listen if they wish, but our high energy, our high vibration is uncomfortable for something that's truly negative. Those who are more balanced and say, hmm, let me think about that. Well, if they want to listen, great. Uh, but please join me now as we begin. We open this for the highest good of all beings and with love in service to all. We come together with this intention, service to all beings and harm to none. We invite Aaron and any other loving high vibrational entity that wishes to join us to be here with us. We create a sacred space. Nothing that is not positively polarized may speak out into the circle, but you are free to listen. We greet you in love and in light. May the work that we do here together be of service to all beings and help spread light and love throughout the universe. This is our intention. I'm going to step back out then and invite Aaron in. Aaron will come in. For those who were new, before Aaron comes in, I always challenge because something that feels like Aaron's vibration could push in. Try to convince me that he was Aaron. Well, you might think, you know Aaron so well, Barbara, how could be, it says my internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me okay? How can I not know it's Aaron? Well, something that's equally negatively polarized to Aaron's positive polarity could feel similar. When I challenge, it makes it very clear. There's a, let's just call it a spiritual law. They have to tell the truth. They can kind of inch around that if I say, do you come in service to all beings? They might say, well, I'm a being and I'm service in service to myself. So of course that's part of all beings. <laughs> That's not quite it. That's not what we're talking about. So I wait till I get a clear positive response and then Aaron will come in. One does not just give one's body to somebody without checking it out.
My blessings and love to you all. I am a, I greet you in love. And I am so happy to see all of your faces. Your world faces some enormous challenges right now. The virus that came with its pandemic. Hatred and mistrust. One nationality or race or religion about another all over the world. And the destruction of the environment which is moving at a faster and faster pace. What we saw online today, a picture of an emaciated polar bear on an ice floe. So tragic and yet as painful as this one bear is, this is magnified, not just polar bears, Plants, insects, vegetation, and humans. So directly affected by the declining environmental conditions of the earth. A man breaks into a supermarket and opens fire. Mothers, fathers, children die alone, or at least away from their families, unable to breathe. This is not what you came for. You have been given the intelligence and the compassionate heart to turn this around. Love is what can turn it around, but not a maudlin kind of love. The true power of love This is what you have been given. We've had a good time in recent weeks with a few of us talking about more about Earth history, where you came from and why you're here. Perhaps the most frequent question I get is, Aaron, why are we here? Why do you think you're here? Sometimes people say to fix things, nothing is broken. On one level, things are distorted and we do not deny those distortions. But you live in a non-dual universe where there is light and darkness, love and fear, spaciousness and contraction, joy and sorrow. As long as you believe you must get rid of that which you perceive as negative in order to win over that which you perceive as positive, you're going to continue to suffer. In the beginning, you don't see that you're doing this. But, and I recognize most of you here tonight have been practicing Vipassana with me for many years and some pure awareness meditation as well. 
we watch how objects arise out of conditions and pass away. If there is anger, the anger has arisen out of conditions. So we say the anger is impermanent. When the conditions cease, the anger will cease. When you try to get rid of the anger, of course you're feeding the anger. If you had a big fire and you were hoping it would go out, you wouldn't keep pouring wood on it. It takes practice to learn that you have the capacity to cease pouring wood on that fire. That you have the capacity to remember who you are to remember your radiance, your divinity, and that you are not the small human, although that's part of what you are, of course, and we cherish that you, but you are spirit, you are love, you are light. So tonight is not about Vipassana breath. We have classes for that. Tonight is about helping share a bigger picture. Because I think understanding the bigger picture can help inspire you not to get caught up in the personal stories of fear, of doubt, of anger, of grief, of shame. You are born of divinity. You are love. When people ask me, what are we doing here? I've been become fond recently of calling it the Eden Project. Your Bible talks of the Garden of Eden and how man came through that garden. And it made the decision to, in biblical story, to eat the apple, choosing the apple of wisdom, of knowledge. I guess not to wisdom, but knowledge. In that story, it seems that man wants to take over and, how would we best phrase it? Buy with the divine for power. But there's a misunderstanding here. That early you born with a body, emotions, ego, immature, may have wanted to divide and claim the power. But on a soul level, that's not why you came. All of you here in this room tonight, you are all old souls. You forget who you are when you come into the human form. But each of you pre-birth held a strong intention to help bring this Project Eden to fruition. What do I mean by Project Eden? that with the help of very loving, highly positively polarized entities, the earth was created as a ground where 
Because it was first, second, third density. Where love could transmute the energy of these densities and raise the vibration. It's easy to hold that high vibration in a heavenly realm in Eden, or in heaven. But here you are with a heavy vibration of earth, with these heavier vibrational bodies, physical bodies, mental emotion. And with an earth that is, a, is of a heavier vibration. The question that was raised at the beginning, before Earth began, is if we bring enough loving intention, if we work to release negativity in ourselves and contraction, and to learn to live in the spaciousness of the loving heart, can that energy literally transform the elements of the earth? Can it transform the consciousness? And in this way, lead the earth into a higher density. Fourth density, fifth. I've been speaking with some of you recently about the fact that many of you were already fourth density energy groups or participants in fourth density energy groups. So I perceive that for many beings, when you graduate from third density, you're going to whisk through fourth density into fifth density. Because you have mastered this deep sharing of the heart unarmored from each other and holding the high intention for love. This is not a prediction. I don't predict the future, but it seems very likely to me that you are not practicing so much for fourth density as fifth density. So how does this work? When you praise the trees and flowers that are beginning to blossom, bringing life to the life. When you praise your friends, when you praise the food that you eat, and give thanks for it all, you can feel how you are raising your own vibrational frequency. Most of you have experienced sitting in a room where a few of you may come into the room with a very positive energy and everyone else in the room is scowling and looking angry. You can feel the low energy. You have a choice. You can get pulled into that low energy. Or you can be, become mindful of the low energy and of the way it pulls you and just say, no, I do not choose that. I choose light, I choose love. It takes effort. That darkness is in a sense downhill and it's easy to fall into it. It's harder to lift yourself up. But when you make that effort, and especially if there are a few of you together in that place where there's more negative energy, without saying anything, just holding a higher energy, you can feel it begin to transform the energy in the whole room. I know that many of you have experienced this. It's so important not to despair. And I know it's hard not to. 
when so many thousands, millions really are dying of the coronavirus, when so many millions are dying or thousands, <laughs> not so good at numbers, forgive me. Yeah. When so many are dying of the bullets, of the bombs. You might be thinking, Aaron, you're overly optimistic. You're certainly entitled to your opinion. All I share is my view. I do not ask you to hold my view. You have free will. I ask you only to listen and consider. One person, just one, can make a, a big difference in this world. When there is an intention to support the God of all beings with love. When there is an intention to watch the old habitual tendencies toward closing in on the self. I perceive that the growth and healing in this earth, you're going to need to move past, I care about all beings, to I am willing it to literally take care of all beings. This is challenging. You can sit in your homes looking at the TV and saying, oh my, this happened and that happened. It's so sad. You could even give them money to worthy causes. You can pray and meditate. What are you literally willing it to give to support the world where all beings are met with respect, where all beings are cherished, where all beings, even a coronavirus, is not healed in hatred? I know we talked a lot last fall about what I perceived as the most accessible cure for the virus, which is high vibration. The virus cannot thrive in high vibration. When you extend loving wishes to the virus, not sure, come and kill us all, but I respect you. You are a sentient being, a certain different kind of sentience, but sentient. I do not hate you, but you must stop because you were killing. And eventually there will be nothing left for you to eat. Speaking this kind of love to that which is negative, whether it's a virus or armed soldiers, or whatever it may be. How far are you able to go? It will take deep awareness of your own fear, fear of your frailty, fear of your impermanence. Fear of loss, fear of powerlessness. Until you are able to look deeply at these fears and hold them in the light, not to get rid of them, but to cherish yourself, fears and all. Until you are willing to do that, you're living in a dual universe. The next step that seems likely to me for the earth is the move into non-duality. Again, I share only my views with you. I don't know everything. 
I have certain views, you may have certain views. And my views do not invalidate your views. I only hope to give you something to ponder. How far are you willing to go to make sure that every life form on this planet and the elements themselves needs are met and that each is cherished. You are divine, you are beautiful, you are powerful. And this is what you took birth for, perhaps in this lifetime, perhaps not for a while. But the earth is moving into this transition. It is moving into a higher realm. And it will be positively polarized or negatively polarized. What are you willing to do to assure that what comes forth is positively polarized? Higher density earth. I'm not asking you to go out barehanded and face an army. I'm not asking you to walk unsheltered into a hospital ward full of COVID patients. I'm not asking you to starve yourself so that others may eat because that would defeat the purpose. We are not talking about sacrificing of the self, but truly imagining the Eden that was promised, a divine realm of high vibration that reminds all beings this is possible. There's a beautiful quote from the Buddha, from a sutra that I have long loved. Abandon the unwholesome. You can't abandon the unwholesome. If it were not possible, I would not ask you to do it. Cultivate the wholesome. You can cultivate the wholesome. If it were not possible, I would not ask you to do it. I'm not giving you the whole sutra here, just key words. What does it mean though? If it were not possible, I would not ask you to do it. First of all, who is asking? This is not me asking, this is your own higher self asking. Remembering your wholeness and divinity. I came into this earth to release negativity from this mind and body. And all the minds and bodies that it touches through the power of love. Here you are looking at your ancient habitual tendency to armor yourself when something negative approaches you. But when we are all armored, we're just knocking into each other. We can't connect. Releasing the armor, we're in it, you see, the shooter in the supermarket, you, you see the COVID virus. You even see the declining environment as an enemy. All of these, my friends, have simply arisen from conditions. And you, each of you, have the power to change those conditions when you bring more loving kindness. People will then ask me, well, how much is enough? How can I tell you that? 
that. What does it mean, enough? People also ask, can I give so much until I'm, until I negate to myself? Is that how I should do it? Well, is that a loving? If you harm yourself, you've simply added to the negativity in the world. How do we return love to the places where there's fear without diminishing ourselves? I think the key to it is to be able to acknowledge negative emotion when it arises. Fear, anger, even hatred. Without it becoming without believing this is you, without becoming self-identified with it. There can be no denial that this arose. There can also not be any shaming of the self that it arose. Oh, here is anger. The conditions have not yet been purified for anger. So anger has arisen. And then, I am going to bring loving kindness to this human being and the conditions it carries, the karma it carries, and invite that kindness to help purify the conditions so that the true self may radiate out the divine essence. So let's come back to Eden Project. A baby does not come through the womb feeling anger. The baby is developing from a one cell being in the womb. It cannot make its own decisions for the most part, although it can at some level perceive when it's ready to be born. But beyond that, it can't control things in its world. That baby, I don't want to, I want to be careful how I say it. The baby does not decide consciously. But at a certain time, the baby knows it's ready to be born that it no longer can live in the shelter's environment. It doesn't know where it's going, but probably will have some dim recollection of what it means to be born, to come through that birth canal and come into separated existence from its mother. It may be excited about that and it may also be terrified. This is how each of you stepped out of Eden into this earth, excited because you had pre-birth planning, knowing why you were coming, knowing that you were coming to help bring the earth into transition into a higher consciousness, and also terrified. Can I do this? Am I ready for this? What will happen? Each of you has such courage. You came forth from Eden saying, yes, I will come into the world. Yes, I can bring love to the world and to the universe. I'll come back to that thought. There are also negatively polarized beings, of course, not yet mature enough to choose to be of service to all beings. Beings who come into the incarnation with the intention to gain in power, to gain in riches. Each incarnation brings a new opportunity for learning. 
But you all, my dear ones, you are all positively polarized entities who came into the incarnation with the intention to deepen in love, to bring that love out into the world and into the universe. This is part of the bigger picture. And beings are watching throughout the universe to see what transpires on Earth. Is love really strong enough to make this shift? Some ask, is love stronger than heat? But this is not the best question because it leads you back into duality. Rather, can you ask, can I come to the place where I can observe a fear, contraction and hatred and see that they are non-dual with love? Where when these arise in me, I can hold them in my heart and allow that which is light and love filled to open up right there with contraction, fear and hatred, with bitterness, with greed. I like to phrase it, that which is aware of greed is not greedy. That which is aware of fear is not afraid. If you deny that fear, greed, or other such contracted emotions are present, you try to push them away and it doesn't offer the opportunity for you. But when you can hold these and look at them, be present with them and see them for what they are and say, no, you are not the boss. I choose love. It really is as simple as that. Perhaps a hundred times a day to watch negative emotion arise and instead of fearing it, to be able to simply say, no, you are not the boss. You have arisen because of conditions and I will hold space for you until the conditions dissolve. And when the condition, conditions dissolve, what remains? Just space and light awareness. If you do not create fertile soil for negative polarity, it has nothing in which to dig its roots. But I said a few minutes ago, this is not just about Earth. Beings throughout the universe are watching. Can there really be a positively polarized planet? that thrives and continues spreading that positive polarity. Is love a truly a stronger force than heat? I am not asking you to believe that that is true. Don't take my word for anything. Look into yourselves in your personal experience, which is stronger, love or fear and hatred. I know many of you personally and your spiritual practices and how deep you have gone with that. In our Dharma path class, We've been working the semester with a path of sacred darkness, finding that which is sacred in the darkness, not just that which is fearful, finding the light within the darkness. 
Many of the transcripts from that class are available for those who might wish to read them and follow along with what the class has been doing. So this is not just the path of sacred light, let's get rid of darkness, but the path of sacred darkness, which transmutes the darkness into the power of love and brings it together. Dissolving any duality, so there is only light. So as I said, beings throughout the universe are watching. Not only is this true, but can this happen in a heavy vibrational map? It's easier on a heavenly plane. These physical and emotional bodies do weigh you down. But the earth itself is heavier density. And as you bring your own vibration up and move into a higher consciousness, the earth, the water, the air, the minerals, everything about the earth is raising in vibration. <clears throat> Here we are full circle. You are coming back to Eden, but an Eden in which you are each a mature being each with free will, each with the power to choose love or fear. And you are here to practice. I hear some of you right now saying, but I'm not ready to do that. Well, are you ready to take the first step? The third step? I'm not expecting it. you will be perfect at it. Is there anybody here who could ride a bicycle the first time out? That balance takes practice. We're talking about a kind of balance, light and darkness, love and fear. Finding the balance there and knowing, oh yes, it's coming back. I remember how to do it. We did this in Eden. One of the most important reflections for you is the fact that you have taken on this heavy vibrational human form. Probably after many lifetimes of being mineral and earth, small one-celled plants and more elaborate plants, animals, moving up through the densities, you have taken on this heavy vibrational human form because it is the only way that you can literally transmute the energy of the whole planet. When we think of fifth density you, I'm not going to try to tell you what density a mineral or vegetable or animal will then be. Maybe it will be the same density, but a much higher vibration of that density. Maybe it will be a different density. We don't know what the future Earth will look like. Only that there is the potential for it to be a ground of love and light throughout the universe. A place that challenges all the previous notions that it is impossible to hold that vibration regardless of the situation in which one finds oneself. You can do it. I know that as a fact because I see you doing it. And I deeply honor you for doing it. You are light. You are love. 
You are part of a glorious, I hesitate to use the word experiment. I don't want it to sound like somebody said, threw you into a bowl and said, you're all part of an experiment. You chose it of your free will. You chose to be part of this experiment. An experiment to shift the vibration of earth. And bring forth a love and delight. And once more, I remind you, you are not really shifting anything. You already are love and light. If, we, if you were not already that, how could you become that? You are simply releasing the notion that you are darkness and allowing yourself to vibrate into that love. It is hard work. I grant you that. You each have guidance, loving beings here to support you. And there are beings like myself, those who come as teachers, brothers and sisters of light. We cannot do it for you. This is something that heavy density, third density beings are bringing forth. It's easy for me, I'm sixth density. You are also sixth density, at least your higher self is. Please let yourself be the fullness of what you are and cease to separate yourself into something I'll become someday and what I am now. Begin to know that you were already everything you could ever dream of being. And you are also you. And there will be despair and anger and pain. Can you greet to those as teachers? Inviting the high vibration that you are with compassion for the human who has allowed itself to move through this experience with the full intention of helping to support love and light throughout the universe. I hope my words have been some inspiration to you. Let's take a minute to stretch and then we'll open the floor to questions. When I say questions, I also would like to invite some degree of share. So I'm going to throw out the challenge. When you are, let me bring up another term that's a favorite of mine. On earth, you sometimes talk about sin. I think of sin as nothing but sinking into negativity. When you are sinking into negativity, what helps? So this is not just about my speaking to you. But we'd love to hear from those of you who have been working with us in depth. What invites you, two parts to the question, what invites you into mindfulness? Oh, I'm sinking into negativity. I'm sinning. I'm sinking into negativity. What invites you to awareness of that and what supports your pulling out of it? So I am happy to answer questions, but I'd also love to hear from more of you. I think it's a gradual, movement based on intention. 
when we hold the intention not to get stuck in the old patterns and we practice bringing compassion to ourselves when the contracted energy of fear comes up, sometimes just naming it, not necessarily fear, that's too big. What's happening in the body? Usually contraction, just saying contract, contract. Breathing in, I am aware of the contraction. Breathing out, I hold space for the contraction. Breathing in, I observe the contraction. Breathing out, I smile to the contraction. Gradually, it stops being an enemy. Okay, here is contraction. Contraction has arisen in me because of conditions. Fear has arisen in me because of conditions. There's a beautiful old story, Tibetan story. Milarepa was sitting by his fire, drinking tea. The Milarepa is a Tibetan saint. And the demons of fear and hatred and anger appeared. They were hideous. They had big claws and bulging eyes, huge teeth. They were terrified. Milarepa did not grab a fire or stick and try to chase them away. He looked at them and said, oh, I've been expecting you. Sit by my fire, have tea. So gradually we learn how to invite our demons in for tea. But there's a second piece to this. Sit by my fire and have tea, but shh, I'm not going to get into a dialogue with you. And it takes practice, but a lot of the people here in the circle can confirm my statement. Yes, we can do this. And I think the not, I'm going to defeat it, this, that's not the energy we want, but I hold the intention to keep raising my vibration of frequency with love, to live with increasing love and compassion in the world. And that becomes the force behind being able to do it, not to get out of your anger. Let me add one more related thought. The thing that's been helping me most recently, like through this week, Aaron keeps prompting me when the catalyst comes along and it's uncomfortable to say, thank you, teacher. Just to remember, this has come to me as a teacher. It's unpleasant. I don't want it. Yeah, but here it is. It, it has arisen out of conditions. There's not much I can do with the fact, here it is, it's here. No, it's not. I won't look at it. Yeah. It's here. Thank you, teacher. And within that, thank you, teacher, comes the reminder why I'm living the incarnation. The deep, uh, I, I offer this for the highest good of all beings. I hold the intention that this that's moving through me can lead it not only to my own transformation, but for that of all beings. And it's not just an idea. There's really a deep loving movement in my heart and it reconnects me to that loving movement in my heart. So it makes it easier to hold space for whatever is unpleasant and not get caught in the stories. All of this is why we call spiritual practice, practice, because it does take practice. <gasps> My blessings and love to you. I am here. Let me add here, Barbara spoke of the power of that. Thank you, teacher practice. 
with these past two weeks, excuse me, with her husband. Many of you have known her for a long time. Some are new to her. Just uh, three years ago, three years and a month ago, our husband had a major stroke. They did not think he would live. His right side is paralyzed. He has aphasia and cannot speak. He was in a nursing home until the pandemic came and then they brought him home. That first year, Barbara and Hal had been married over 50 years and a loving relationship. It's hard to lose your best friend, your romantic partner, your life partner. He remained alive, but not who he was. It's very understandable that one would cling. I want him back. I don't want this new life. For those first two years, Barbara was suddenly, after over 50 years, Barbara was living alone. I don't want to live alone. Make it go away. The most important thing for Barbara at that point was to be able to acknowledge the grief and the anger. These are simply emotions. Anger is energy. Grief is energy. They're not bad. They're part of the experience of being human just as a if you step on a thorn, it will prick your foot. Pain. It's part of being you. I'm emphasizing this because so much of what I spoke about in my opening talk, the bringing of this whole earth plane into a higher density involves bringing each of yourselves into a higher vibration. And that is only done with all-inclusive compassion. It's so easy to scold yourselves, to put yourselves out of your heart. And many of these teachings are based in wisdom, but wisdom is like one wing of a bird and it cannot fly. We need compassion two ways, for the spirit to soar, for love to soar. It is so hard for you to have compassion for yourselves. So many of you have deep compassion for others. And it's so important that you bring yourselves into your hearts, not with a modeling kind of compassion. It's not really compassion. More than stories of, oh, I'm okay. Truly opening your heart to your pain, acknowledging the pain. This is where you begin to really know it as simply a reason from conditions and to find what moves on the other side of that experience to find that light and that love that have always been there and that are truly what you are. Absolutely. <laughs> The Buddha emphasized the importance of the Sangha. It's the same thing. But here, because we have small groups that are going so deep with honesty, trusting each other. My friend at Kuo introduced me to the term social memory complex. We're becoming, your groups are becoming social memory complexes. This whole Deep Spring Sangha is becoming a group to some degree. All over the world, there are groups like this. People are 
inspired to go deep because there is so much, well, because there is so much suffering and intention to find an end to suffering, but also because there is so much love and a deep inspiration to bring forth that love as part of the transition of earth. When you hear each other without armor, with your hearts open, you don't have to protect yourselves from each other. And then, as you put it, John, you really can learn from each other's experience, finally. Because until that point, you cannot learn from someone else's experience. But finally, you can. This is why I say that for, let me phrase this carefully. It seems a real possibility to me that Earth will just rule through fourth density almost directly into fifth density where beings come out of the group experience. Now, this is interesting. Now you are in separate experiences in third density. Then moving into a group experience in fourth density, whether it will still incarnate in this lifetime or whether it will be in fourth density in a different way. What does fifth density look like? Third density is the place for learning and compassion. In fourth density, that compassion deepens as we open our hearts to each other and really know you are me and I am you. Fifth density is the, let me say this carefully, every density has various learnings but a heart of fifth density learning is wisdom. You are learning wisdom now, but it has not yet really taken root. Some of you have a very deep wisdom. Maybe you're ready to rule into sixth density, who knows? But for many of you, the things we've been saying, Everything arises out of conditions and passes away is impermanent and not of the nature of a separate self. Well, that's a good thing to say. What does it mean? How do you live that? In fifth density, you begin to directly experience the results of your thoughts, actions, speech and see how it truly is all arising in, out of conditions and break through into simply knowing there's nothing that defines you as a separate self. You begin to experience your non-separation with everything, which is ultimately a sixth density experience to awaken. I want to be careful with how I use these words not to set up a linearity to it. Some of you have had profound awakening experiences where the body and the ego seem to dissolve, where you knew yourself as directly connected to everything. But as the human, you've not been able to maintain that. The knowing comes and then it goes for the most part. You're a bit more aware than you were before that experience, but you can't hold on to the experience. As you move out of third density, where you're so where you think of yourself as this limited human and begin to know your unlimitedness, your interconnection. Then you pass through that fourth density group experience into the uh, expression of separateness, knowing that there's never been anything separate. 
then you have the power if you could think of one core being with a thousand hands and each hand, this hand is good at playing the piano. That hand is good at carving wood. This hand is good at cooking or burping babies. Each hand has certain power, but they're all from one central awareness. I am that, the awakened heart of my Lord, God. This is where fifth density begins to roll into sixth density. So there's a lot of adventures still to be had, and they are all wonderful, even though some of them will bring suffering. If I understand you correctly, let me say this clearly. You are simultaneously first through eighth density. You are expressing right now as third density human, but that doesn't limit you. As a sixth density being, you're already awake. The sixth density is basically your own higher self, the sixth density aspect of you. And it's the awake aspect of you. But it gets sucked into the human experience. As you become increasingly connected to the sixth density expression of yourself, can increasingly let go of what pulls you down into limitation, the armoring and such, and can stay connected. You live increasingly in that one who is already awake. It's harder now because you have the heavier earth vibration around you. As Earth itself moves through the transition, so that the elements themselves are of a higher vibration, it will be much easier to sustain that high vibration. Thus, beings who are fifth density on Earth will have a much higher vibration than is possible now. Thus, easier to sustain what would be sixth density awakening experience. I'm going to speak a bit from my own experience here. I was a third density girl. In that lifetime that some of you have heard me describe. 500 years ago. I had what could be called an awakening experience. It shattered the sense of a separate self. I took some time to adjust to knowing the simultaneity of that awake human and the small human that still experience the arising of pain or confusion or whatever. If I cut my finger, it still hurt. There was no aversion to it. There was compassion. If somebody yelled at me, it still was unpleasant. But I did not move into any story of he's bad or I'm bad. Just hearing yelling. It brought me compassion. Because the third density core teaching is that of compassion. But in that awakening experience, I also awoke with wisdom. Now this doesn't always happen. There may be a full awakening experience as a third density. Or it may just begin to flow as you move into higher densities as the whole earth transitions. Higher vibration, the balance, wisdom, and compassion starts to grow, and you become more and more clear of 
not just what you are, but what the whole universe is, of that ground of love. When you rest firmly in that ground of love, you're awake to the point that you can no longer be pulled back into any negative polarity, into any strong aversion or the stories from the aversion. You're free. Remember, liberation is not a linear process, although it can be experienced to some degree as that. You are already awake. Where is that part of you that is already awake? Right there. The question is not about being asleep versus awake, but how well you are able to sustain that awakened consciousness before you slip down out of it. The, as the consciousness moves into a higher vibration, the awakened aspect of you becomes more accessible. Watching what is arising and holding the intention to stay as close as possible to the divine awareness, the awakened heart. I so enjoy your questions. They come from such a loving place in your heart. And it fills me with hope for your planet and the universe that there are so many of you really willing to take these issues on. The whole process of giving a birth to the awakened self in yourself, freeing yourself from the bonds of limiting yourself to I am human, and knowing your divine essence. My blessings and love to you. How does the scope where I was watching Star Trek live long and prosper? <laughs> My love to you, I'll release the body to Barbara. <sighs> Thank you, Eric. So it's after nine. Uh, it's been lovely to be with you. That's all. I'll see many of you next month in one way or another, in the retreat or evening with Aaron or Darshan or some of each. Much love to you.